How's it going, Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games, and today we have another episode of our Understanding How to Build series, where we go over all the set one leads to help you understand how to build a deck, so that way you can build a deck yourself, and also to help suit you and your playstyle. So we've gone through the other aggression ones, we've gone through all the villainy ones, we invader, um, Grand Inquisitor, and IG-88, and now we're on to the heroic side, and we're starting off from the heroic side with Cassian Andor. So if you're interested in this lead, and you want to learn how to build a deck for him, then look no further. Unfortunately, we will not be giving out lists in this deck, so, uh, in this um, in this series, because we're not looking to give out lists so people can just copy-paste and try it. We're looking to help people understand how to build the deck, so that way you can suit because people have different play styles, and help you um, build up your skills when deck building. So if you're looking, inter interested in this lead, and if built, well, understanding how to build for this lead, keep watching. And before you end the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It keeps you updated with my videos as and when they drop. And by clicking the notification bell, you can get alerts to when my videos do drop, watch them there and then, or at a later time. So without out of the way, let's go ahead and understand how to build Cassian Andor. So this is Cassian. He is a leader, and uh, I don't really know until, because like, I don't know all the leaders, all the characters, because I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but uh, I do like Star Wars. Like I prefer, really, really the original trilogy, because that's just what I grew up um, first saw when I grew up for Star Wars. So uh, I don't really know where this leader came, uh, this uh, character came from, so I went and watched uh, Rogue One, and it's quite interesting. It's got a character light, and his effects are quite nice as well. Now he's only got one trait being Rebel, but luckily for the heroic side, there's a lot of support for Rebel. Like it's one of the main traits that are supported by the heroic side of clans, so it's a good trait to have for its character. And he is um he's not got the latest he's not got the earliest but he's also got the latest um when it comes to deploying because he deploys at six resources so as early as turn five he can drop unless you ramp you can maybe get him out a little, little bit earlier, and he also gives you access to any aggression heroic cards without the aspect penalty which is nice. When he does deploy he has got quite decent stats being four or six so he puts a decent amount of damage out and has a decent amount of health like it's nice to have uh, six and above is quite nice because it gets you out of way way of um takedown which is an easy um event in blue or well, vigilance that can help take out things instantly so uh like having such a low hp like that which is normally only only three characters i think being like chirrut sabine and ig can all be taken out instantly by um uh an event but luckily he's out the way of that and he has quite a nice action that gives you a good amount of um resources it keeps you um like your card advantage up because normally, starting off the game, you normally don't have too many options. You have to kind of consider what options you have until you get later turns when you start getting a few more cards built up a hand. But he allows you to like mitigate that and just keep a good amount of uh, cards in hand. Because this effect, when in the leader area, is paying one and tapping itself. If you've dealt three or more damage to an enemy base this phase, you draw a card. So ideally, you want to prioritize on playing units that can like do free damage or spam enough units to do this that amount of damage. But if you can get in one swing, that's quite nice because you can get the um the draw. But then because it has to tap one and tap himself, like tapping himself is not not an issue, not an issue at all. But the tapping one means you have to kind of play off curve, where you're not making use of all your energy to turn. You've got to save one to make use of this, and you're not really getting his effects off from the first turn of the game. But then you don't get this, that kind of effect off usefully um, for the rest of the game in most leaders, though. But then when you do deploy him, he comes in with saboteur, so you can ignore um, you ignore shields when you attack a unit that has shields, and also you can ignore sentinel as well, so you, sentinel doesn't really affect you. And he keeps on with the like drawing by doing damage, where his effect is now when you deal damage on a new base. You may draw a card. You can only use his ability once each round, which is fair enough. Because if you could do it every time you attack a base, you can accrue quite a lot if you can go wide with your um, well, with wide with just attacks really. Just keep going at the base and keep drawing cards, which could be like a bit OP. And it doesn't need to be him attacking. It's just when you deal damage to your base. So if you got him deployed and then you deal damage with to a base with something else, then you can get a draw card, but you can easily do it with him because you can deploy him. Having saboteur means he can't be really stopped from attacking a base. You could just swing it. Do enough that do some damage and then draw a card. So it's really good for hand advantage, which is really nice, but he hasn't seen much play. I think that's because people don't really explore too much outside of the more popular strategies, because once like decks start being topping and like like overly used, people don't really go for that. So this is an interesting one and more like a um rogue one that you don't normally see, but is one I'm gonna look into try and play out myself. So that's the leader. So that is a little coverage of the leader. Now we're gonna go and have a look at some of the other bits when it comes to understanding how to build the deck. So as we see, he has he gives you the heroic traits and the aggression trait. 
well, aspects, sorry, not traits, aspects. Aspects and traits are a little bit different, but he gives you those two aspects. And now by combining a base with your lead, you can get uh, these four different combinations. You can either get uh, your leader's aspects with vigilance, command, aggression, so you can go double aggression, or cunning. Now, there's different ways to build it, and there's these four different ways, and the aspects are important because any if any time there's the aspect penalty, which means if you try to play a card that doesn't have an aspect that matches what that matches with your leader or your base, you have to pay an aspect penalty. Meaning for everyone that doesn't match, you have to pay an extra two resources on top of the cost of the actual card. So if you wanted to play a free cost card and you had your leader and a blue base and you wanted to play a blue card, you don't have to worry about aspect penalty penalty, you just pay the cost of the card, you pay free resources and play out the card. But if you wanted to play a free cost card that had um, command as one of its uh, aspects, because it doesn't match on your blue base and your lead, you'd have to pay an extra two on top of its cost, and you have to pay five. Now, if you wanted to play a card that was both um, uh, free cost but had command and villainy, because neither of those aspects match, you have to pay an extra two for each aspect, meaning you have to pay an extra four, meaning you're actually paying seven for this free cost card, which doesn't sound great. So be aware of your aspects and like remember to plan accordingly what aspects you're going to have across your leader and your base because those matter in not make not giving uh, more cost than what's printed for cards. So that's the four different ways. Before we get into like the, the different kind of combinations, what they offer, we're going to go into the ratios. So you can play a maximum of three copies of any given card. So it's quite nice. You only have to get play three copies rather than four because there are games where you, you can play four copies of card, like in Pokemon things like that. But in this game, you only play a maximum of three, which means it's a bit cheaper when it gets to in a play set. But it also means you can play cards either three copies, two copies, or one copies. And you might be wondering, what the um, what's the difference between the number of copies you play? Well, there's an important factor in how like the reason behind playing three copies of card to compared to playing one copy of card. So you're seeing examples on screen here, where which are like good examples of what cards you might want to play in certain amount, certain amounts. So we've got Green Squatch and Airwing here, being a very good and very cheap unit that is very strong, good stats. Raid two means it's putting in a lot of uh, damage when it attacks, which is quite nice for its cost. So this is the kind of cards you want to have as like uh, three copies of, so you can see as many as you can early as possible, and see it as I can see it as frequently as and early as possible, so you can actually make use of it, and play it out, and do some damage with it. So cards you normally want to have, like up to see often or always try to see. You normally want three copies. Then we've got Gorilla Attack Pod here. This is a um, six cost. So it's quite a late game card, so it won't come down until as early as turn five. And given that, like, if you have this open, you're open in turns for the first few turns, you can't play it because you don't have the resources to do unless you do a lot of ramping. And these are kind of cards that you kind of want to see when it comes to the later game, but you don't want to see them early. So if you have three copies and start seeing all of them early, you have to either then start charging or keeping your hand and they're dead, unable to be used. So cards like this are like more late game things that you can't play too early. You might want to have lower it's like two copies, because then you can hopefully see them in the later turn, but then you won't see too many copies of like, like clog your hand early to then have to charge and not have access to them later game in the game. So you normally want to have like bigger things at uh, maybe two copies. And then you also got the one copy. This is normally like your tech choices, like cards you think could be useful in certain situations, could be handy to have in your deck. But then if you see it in the right situation, it could be really handy. But if you don't see it in the right situation, you don't really care. But also the same thing if you don't if you're not handy in a situation. If you see it, you can always charge it. If you don't see it, you don't really care about it. So the tech choices that are normally like things that you think might be useful, but don't really have an impact. You don't really care too much if you draw them or not. Uh normally at one copies. And these are cards that maybe if you want to have like maybe including more, you can even side deck them as well. So you can have an extra copy in the side. So you, if they are more useful, you can up the copies if you want to. So hopefully that explains the ratios and the like what kind of um, amount of cards you want to have of each one. So if you want to have card a copy, three copies or two copies or one copies for any given one. So out of the way, we should actually give you a bit more of an understanding about what the leader is, uh, what the leader does, what's trying to achieve, and kind of like with the ratios when it comes to quantities of the cards. So now let's go into the aspects and see what each aspect combination offers for this lead. So we're always going to start off with the double aspect because it's the it's the like it's the one that is not the greatest currently with set one, but we've got to see what it offers. And for Cassian Andor it's double red or double aggression. And like with every aspect, you get an option of three bases. You get two um you get two like basically vanilla bases, like bases that are just 30 health with no skills. Or you get an access to a, a rare base, which has a little bit less on, on the health, be it 25 instead of 30, but has an epic action you can play and use once per game. 
And for Tarkin Town, its epic action is allowing you to do free damage to a damaged non-leader unit, which could be really handy. Like it doesn't just do outright free damage; that'd be a bit a bit too strong for free from a base, even if it's once a game. But it's a nice little way where if you're trying to take out something by damage and you're not quite, you can't quite kill it. I can't have to take it out and it kind of survives. You can finish off with Tarkin Town, which is really nice. Now you can't do it to leaders, but then none of the bases really affect leaders at all. So those are the bases you get access to. You got to think about if you want to make use of Tarkin Town, and within aggression, it kind of goes right all of it because it's all about doing aggression, like uh, aggressive damage, but like like throw out damage willy nilly. And the thing with double aspects is you lose ac like you get access to some powerful cards like these three on the screen, but you lose ac access to a whole different aspects and. Um, also, as well as that, you also have a lot, like a lot smaller of a card pool, especially with set one. Because if you do different aspects, you, if you'd like, say, put cunning with this, you'd have access to all the cunning cards and the aggression cards, so I think for quite a big card pool. But by going double aggression, you're only limited to aggression cards unless you want to incur the aspect penalty. And you get in for the lack of card pool, you get access to these three uh, double aspect cards. Because currently in set one, each color, each um, aspect has only three cards that are double aspect. But as we get more and more um, sets, we'll get more options, like more options in just aggression itself, and more options and cards in the double aspect. We may even get cards that could be triple aspect, we'll see that in the future. So by sacrificing ac like access to a never aspect, you get access to these three cards without incurring a penalty. And these are quite interesting ones, but double aggression isn't the strongest when it comes to a double aspect cards. Like they don't have anything that really, like too many decks can make full use of. That could be amazing, but maybe you can do it better with um, uh, Cassian because in the uh, heroic side of it, there's a lot like a lot nicer, like cheaper units in the heroic side than there's the dark side, and you can make use of that with like Rallying Cry. Like Rallying Cry is a really good one to make use of all like the cheap costing heroic units by giving them more raid two for the phase, making them a lot stronger when they swing. So when they swing, they swing for extra two damage, all of them. But then the other two cards like Aggression Sword Bearer here aren't the best when it comes to double aggression, but Rallying Cry can give a reason to go double aggression with the heroic side of the um of leaders. So I wouldn't recommend going for this, but you can always try if you want to go I can be more aggressive and especially with Cassian able to make use of that aggression by helping you draw more cards by using its leader skill it is quite nice. So now we're going to the next one. We have Vigilance, and this is quite this is quite an interesting one because for the heroic side, it doesn't have the best uh, in terms of like cheap, like decent units. Like it has a few, but then it's more uh, more for late game than it's early game. Where Cassie is more of like a, you want to be able to like put some sort of damage in and take like take control. It's like a weird one. It just gives you a draw power, which is quite nice. And you have access to some of these interesting um, heroic units. You do, do also ha have access to free bases as well, just like with um, aggression. You've got the two uh, vanilla bases that are very health, but then you've got the rare base being security complex. And its epic action allows you to give a shield token to any non-leader unit, which is really nice because it means, means you give that protection to a unit to protect it once from damage, which is quite cool. You can give it to a leader, but you can give it to any of your other units. But if you've got an important unit you want to keep around, you can give it a shield to us at least by... Damage is protected once, but then by instant KO effects, it is not. So you want some interesting hero like heroic units, so you got some cheap ones like Restored Arc, Restored Arc and Yoda, giving you a bit of healing with the Restore, and then even Yoda when it's defeated, you can choose any number of players, but being, remember you are a player, so you can always choose yourself, and let them draw a card, so you can always have Yoda defeated, choose yourself, draw a card. And you want some more later, like mid to late game ones, like Camp Kanan for like a nice one that helps with a bit of meal. And it's quite a decent stance. You got Obi Wan and Luke for like more later game ones to kind of help the, like um, protect and from like protection and removal kind of things. And then just the norm, the non heroic side of this as well is quite interesting. Where you've got uh, some other good units. Like you've got some very good events in like takedown and stuff for like a vigilance. Vigilance has some very good events. You also have some quite nice um, upgrades like electrostaff and kind of thing, which allows you to give a extra two two for the cost of two. To a unit and make it so it takes less damage when it's attacked by like takes one less, which is a really nice one, especially if you want to keep uh, Casey Cassian around on its uh, when it's deployed to kind of get that draw without drawing without well, paying energy for it. And you got some good like nice interesting units. So you got like Wilderness Fighter here being like a free cost that comes in shield and it's got protection. You got Rugged Survivors, so long you keep out your leader when it attacks, you get the draw card and it gets stronger the more damage it takes. And you got things like System Control Craft giving you like a Sentinel to help uh, protection from the space arena. So Vigilance is a quite nice one. It doesn't have the best kind of units you can um, get, but it has a lot of like rec like um, 
protection and uh, healing in it. So if you want to keep uh, keeping the game longer, you can always you always have the healing and um, protection from the effects in here, and you have some nice events and uh, units in it as well. Not the best, but you have some really nice ones to keep like the survival in it. So moving on from vigilance, we then go on to command, one of the most popular aspects in the game because of the ramp and also things like ambush being a skill. And speaking of ambush, your rare base for this one is Energy Conversion Lab, one of the strongest uh, bases and most overused bases in the game. Because it's epic action, allows you play a six cost or less from your hand and give it ambush. Now you do have to still have to pay the cost of the card that you're playing. So you, even though you play a six or, six or less, you just have to pay the cost of that card to play out. You don't play it for free. You have to pay the cost. You just bring it in with ambush. So if it doesn't have ambush, it now has ambush. And ambush is a really nice skill, allowing the card there just come in. So restand and attack another unit in the same turn. Because normally you would play something, it comes in exhausted, comes in rested, and you can't really attack with it. But ambush allows you to attack with it straight away, but only from unit into unit. So you can't attack a base, but you can attack another unit with it, which is pretty nice. And then on the good side of um, or the heroic side of uh, command, you have some really good things. That you have some really good, strong, cheap units that can actually make use of a uh, Cassian's leader side to have to do free damage to draw a draw card, like with Battlefield Marine and Echo Base Defender. And you also have some like, pretty interesting, like a more ex Expensive units like Rogue Squad and Skirmisher, going to come down ambush to help control the board. We'll also have a nicer kind of effect to get back a two cost or less uh, uh, a unit that costs two or less, like getting back a Battlefield Marine or so, like some good cheap units back. So keep your hand like healthy with units to play. And because because you have a lot of um, good rebel, like a lot of the heroic side cards are like rebels, you have some good support with rebels as well. So you make use of your lead being a rebel and also ever rebel cards by having like rebel assault. Now you do more damage, be more aggressive, which is one of the like, keystones with the, the uh, rebel side being the aggro decks. So rebel assault allows you to attack with two rebels, one after the other, and give them both a extra plus one on their attacks as well. And it only costs one to use. And then for the late game, you have Ryuing Reinforcement being one of the best rare cards in the game. And uh, for seven, it's quite costly, but remember, it's in, the, it's in the color of ramp, well, the aspect of ramp, so it's not too bad being a seven cost. And as you play, look at the top ten cards and play up to three units with a combined cost of seven or less and play them out for free. So you can potentially bring out, so like, re, like a really big thing, like a seven cost thing for free, even if it's not the same aspect as your what you've got on your leader and base, or bring out a load of small units to kind of swarm the board so you can go and put some like uh, white pressure. Very nice card, one of the best in the game currently. And on the non-heroic side of it, you've got some really good cards as well. That you got Colonel Yoram being very good um, healing. Even counts itself when it comes to heal, because every time you play a command unit, you get to heal one damage, damage from your base, and it counts itself. You've got Steph Stephas Battalion, one of the best cards that goes in combination with Energy Conversion Lab, where if you can get your leader out, you can, uh, whenever it attacks, you can give a unit a plus 2-2, two -two, even itself. And it's a nice way to kind of like come in and ambush and take out opposing leaders. You've got some really nice space units in a certain Star Viper, giving you a bit of a restore and get a bit of healing if you've got the initiative. And you've got very good non-unit uh, cards like upgrades and events like Traitorous here, being able to just snag one of your opponent's uh, units that have cost three or less. So if your opponent's pumping up a small guy, you just take it from him. And even resupply, giving you a bit of ramp as well. So command is a very nice way to play it if you want to go more like aggressive and go like, very aggro of it. But there are different ways to play it, which it was what comes to the next one. So for next we have Cunning, and we'll start with the base because it's one of the like least, uh, one of the, well, not I wouldn't say the worst, but it's one of the least used um, rare bases in the game, being Jedi City, because its epic action is given a non-leader unit minus four for the phase. So while you can weaken something to attack into it without taking as much damage back, or weaken something so it doesn't do too much damage to you in that turn, it's not the best, but it's a nice option. You can either go for the vanilla... Uh, bases that are very helpful, you can go for this one in Cunning if you want to. Now in Heroic side there are some pretty nice cards in this, like there's not the most when it comes to lower cost units, but there are some pretty nice ones like all here, all can like uh, meet the criteria of the of Cassian's leader side when it's not deployed, where you need to do free damage to a base to get a draw, so you've got low full surgeon being a very cheap unit to play to, uh, turn one. That has free damage. You well, does free damage. You can do damage straight away to draw a card. You've got Ezra Bridger being a very good heroic card. Being like if once it completes attack, so it needs to survive uh, attack, then survive that attack. You can look at top card of your deck and either choose to play it, discard it, or leave it on top of your deck. So you can potentially play more cards outside your hand from the top of your deck. And you've got Rogue Operative being a very nice one where it's got saboteur, so it can make it so it 
is ignore sentinels. You have to worry about your opponent trying to block you off attacking base. So you can fulfill um, Cassian's uh, effect to draw a card when it does damage. It gains raid two, so even if it's got two damage printed, it does an extra two thanks to its raid, meaning it swings for four, but only does two when attacked. And then you've got Millennium Falcon being a very good unit you can come in straight away to play to kind of make use of it to come down, swing, get that free damage in, but it does cost free, and also you do need to generate reboot face at the end of the turn, pay one to keep it in in play, or bounce it back to your hand, so it's one of those troublesome ones. But if it's taking damage, you can always bounce it back to your hand, so it's not no longer damage, bring it back in fresh and new. Then you also have some interesting uh, like events, like because uh, Cunning does have a load of good events as well, like you got Bamboozle, you can kind of cheat this out by using its first effect to kind of discard a Cunning card instead of paying its cost, and given that Cassian can draw you quite a large amount of cards, you can kind of make use of that without feeling too much of a downside on that. And it allows you to exhaust the unit and return all the upgrades on it to its owner's hand, so you can kind of like de upgrade a card. Because I've seen some decks that kind of like load up a one card with a load of um, with a load of vent with a load of upgrades, and it's quite difficult to deal with. So you can always rest that unit and then just get rid of those upgrades back on the hand off it. And then for the non heroic side of it, you've got still some good units you can make use of uh, Cassie's ability. You've got Greedo here, well, to do like very cheap free damage, but it's very fragile. That's a nice effect when it's defeated. Crafty Smuggler coming in with a bit of shield as well, if you're a good uh, two cop, well, a good turn one play. And you've got some good spaceship uh, and like space units, and, like Pirate Starfighter, allowing you to reuse some cards that you played, bounce back to hand if they are attacked. If, so if they're taking some damage and they're still alive, bounce back to your hands so the damage is off and you can play them back again. While being a very good unit, being like a very good stance for a two cost. And then Strafing Gunship being a very nice unique unit that can um, like destroy the boundaries of uh, the arenas. Because usually in the game, only ground, ground units can attack ground units and only space units can attack space units. So you can only attack things in the same arena. But Strafing Gunship basically just ignores the rules and can attack ground arena units thanks to its effect and then if it does it takes two less damage back and like I said you've got some really nice uh, events you can got um, events in cutting that actually give a bit of an attack and give a bit of a boost so that way you can make sure if you're not normally able to get that free damage in on your leader's not like leader area side to get that draw then you can always use events to kind of swing with a boost so you can get that free damage done so cutting is a very nice way to do it and very good at control and um, allows you to like, make use of all the drawn cards because you can then use them to kind of, like, control the game and it's probably one of the ways I would probably play it and I'm going to try playing it anyway. So that's cutting name it, thinking what else does that have access to? Well it does also have access to just heroic side cards. Remember because he's a rebel and you've got a lot of uh, rebel stuff in the good and the um, heroic side, you do have access to some pretty nice rebel cards. You've got Fleet Lieutenant being another unit that's got stats to kind of like make use of Cassian's uh, lead area effect, but also allowing you to allow other units to kind of do that as well, because it make, allows you to attack with a unit, and if it's a rebel, which most likely it will be, you give it a plus two to that attack, so that way you can get that draw if the card is not weak, like not strong enough to do free damage to a base. And then you've got Wing Leader allowing you to give experience tokens to a unit, like even power up Cassian when it comes out, or even other units. You've got Children of the Donna, just to give all rebel units an extra 1-1, one, one, and comes with good stats at a 4-4 four, four for a 4 cost. And metal, metal Ceremony, allowing you to like just give a free boost to three of your Rebels attack that turn to make them a little bit stronger, which is quite nice. So that's just the Heroic side, but also remember there is um the Heroic side, they're just basically aggression units that are not double aggression we can get you uh, see as well. So in just a leader on its own, you've got access to some pretty nice units, and as I said, there's some very good Heroic units that are quite cheap that can put uh, damage in. So you've got Sabine Ren being a really nice one. Um, only has two attack, but then it's got a nice on attack where you can deal one damage on a defender or a base when it attacks. So even though it only does two damage for attacking, you can still use its on attack to do one damage, meaning the three damage needed to a base to trigger a Cassian. You got very good, and never like a very good um, ground unit being uh, K two S O, which then if it's defeated, like if you ram it to another one, you can choose to do three damage to a base to fulfill Cassian as well, or make opponent discard. And has overwhelm, so you can even do piercing damage if it does survive after attacking something. And you've even got like good, really good space units that also can push free damage as well, like Green Squadron A-Wing and Red Free. Both do free damage when they attack, and even Red Free allowing other units to do more damage thanks to Raid 1. And you even got four calls I believe in, like a card that's even featuring Cassian on that can help you do damage. And if you focus on being like a pure heroic deck, so having all, your, uh, all cards in your deck having the heroic trait, 
you can make sure you definitely do enough damage to trigger Cassian. We're also looking at the top cards of your deck and looking at the next four cards if you want to keep them and arranging what order you want to see you kind of like draw them into, which is very cool. And that's just the heroic sides. And in the non heroic side, you've got some very good units as well. Like you've got Bent YouTubes and um, Petit Insurgent, which gets benefits from having other uh, as aggression units on board. So, like. Um, Two tubes allows you to on a tank give a never friendly aggression unit raid two, so you can do more damage. And even part of the insurgent, what you've got, where you control a never aggression unit, he gains raid two himself. And you've got things like Wolf being a never unit that's quite cheap, that at least does free damage, and has Saboteur as well to get past uh, Sentinel shenanigans, and also has a nice little when played on attack, stopping uh, bases from being healed this phase. You can protect your opponent from uh, healing up constantly. You've even got a very handy um, upgrade in Infiltrator Skill, allowing you to give Saboteur to the like give a unit extra plus one by putting this upgrade on it, and also giving it Saboteur. So you can once again, if you need to, because you need to go to a base to uh, go ahead and do damage to trigger Cassian. You need to go, if you can't attack a base because of Sentinel, Infiltrator Skill allows you to give Saboteur, so that way the card can then ignore Sentinel as well. And even like things like keep fighting being very nice events allow you to ready a unit with three or less power, so you can then attack again and just basically get more, push more damage in. You can be very aggressive with aggression. So that is all different ways. Like you've got the nice kind of um, thing in um, Vigilance, are you keeping that allow you keeping the game longer by having a lot of heal and protection on your units and stuff like that? You've got command allowing you to like ramp up and play things early while having a load of good, cheap, um, and aggressive units to go very aggro which is one of the most prominent ones while giving ambush as well. And then you've got cunning as well, allowing you to give a bit more control and uh, like, um, yeah, keep it like in control so you can keep off, like, keep back the units, keep them uh, held down while then pushing damage to keep drawing up cards and just make sure your opponent's not having a fun time. So Cassian is one of those that has a lot of potential and a very good effect in getting you uh, more cards by drawing you drawing more, which is uh, not, not much you see outside, like say Palpatine, but even then he has to sack off one of his units to do it. Whereas that casting just has to do damage. So hopefully it helps you understand how to build like which which is the best way for you to build Cassie and to meet your needs and your playstyle. And that is it for today. So thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And for the next one, we'll head on and go go over Sabine Wren before we go on to the last of the leaders in cunning as well. So just for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.